Elden Ring is the latest title by From Software, an action role-playing game with the legendary fantasy novelist George R. R. Martin producing its lore and backstory. Since its release date on February 25th, 2022, it sold just over 12 million copies in only one month. It can be punishingly difficult, but wonderful and enjoyable, and I'm going to tell you why. I'm Joe Mango from Daily Gamer, and this is our first impressions of Elden Ring. I'm currently about 60 hours into the game, which for Elden Ring isn't as long as you might think, but it gives me a pretty good understanding of what's on offer here. When you first start a new Elden Ring game, you have to choose your starting class, of which there are 10 to choose from. It's not overly important which one you start with, as you can always change what attributes to focus on later. This is more of a good jumping off point for different builds. I would recommend someone with a bit more health and armor like the Samurai, who not only does good damage with his melee but also carries a bow for long range options. Or perhaps the confessor who has a sword and shield as well as a few spells that can heal you or do some decent damage. As you level up you'll be able to choose which attributes to focus on which will allow you to enhance the build you've chosen to go for. Like I said earlier as you get further into the game you can reset these abilities. Now once you have picked your character, you then make your way into, of course, the starting zone. You can run through the starting zone without learning much, but there is like a kind of hidden tunnel you can jump into where you'll be taught some of the basics. Unlike most games and quite fitting for a From Software game, this is really the only time you'll get any sort of tuition. Even when it comes to quests or the main storyline, you kind of just have to figure it out on your own or I guess Google it. At the start, I was a little put off by this as I'm used to games like World of Warcraft holding your hand every step of the way. But once you start to realize the game isn't for quickly going from one objective to the next, exploration and discovery starts to take over as a main feature to get you to really appreciate Elden Ring for what it is. As you can tell quite quickly, the map is vast, with lots to do, lots to explore, and plenty of chances to be killed by various animals, creatures, and more. With approximately 120 bosses to stumble upon that all range in difficulty, with unique items to be dropped, all I can say is that there is endless playability. It's made easier to get around by sites of grace that you can find all over the lands between, that once discovered allows you to fast travel with ease. You can also rest at these sites of grace to replenish your health, FP and potions, plus they are great for getting yourself out of combat. You may have noticed already, but the overall look of the game is impressive. From the beautiful and wonderful landscapes to the incredible and unique characters, weapons, armor, bosses, and more. I wouldn't say it's the best graphics I've seen from a recent RPG game, but perhaps the lack in overall graphic fidelity is to allow the intense fighting mechanics that you need to have split second reaction speeds and to be as precise as possible. I would still applaud them for the immersive world they have created, especially its scale. Elden Ring's gameplay is something to marvel at, and in my opinion, it's probably one of the best of any game on the market today. It's not the typical open world that tells you to go here, find this item, then go there. It's done in a much more subtle way. Your path to new areas and locations is more accidental than anything, allowing you to progress through the game uniquely compared to other players. You mainly gauge if you're in the right area or not, depending on how easily you can defeat the enemies. Wander too far too quickly and you will meet your demise pretty swiftly. So the best way to play is to go to one location, roam around and discover everything you can from hidden caves, underground tunnels, mini bosses, treasure chests and more. Until you feel like you've completed that area, then move on. You will level up quite quickly, providing you hold on to the runes that you gather from killing the world's enemies. As you do go up levels though, it will cost more runes to get to the next level. If you die, you lose all your runes and they'll be placed on the floor of where you died. If you're able to go and grab those runes before you die again, then you get to keep them. If not, they're gone forever. As you level up, it allows you to move onto harder locations with better loot, but of course that means harder enemies. One thing to keep in mind when leveling up is to try and focus your points on only a few attributes to deal as much damage as you can with that specific setup. You will not be able to be a proficient spellcaster, a hard-hitting colossal sword wielder, and a buffing god all in one, at least not when you first start out. 
The variety of builds you can go for is crazy, with many different items on offer to increase specific skills and attributes. Not to mention the serious amount of weapon availability with 31 choices, from great swords, axes, fist weapons, shields, that all have between 4 and 24 varieties to pick from. And for the most part, they all have their own purpose and place in the game. Certain weapons have unique ashes of war, which are special abilities for your weapons that can't be changed. Most weapons, you can actually choose the ash of war you want to put on it. They also have great visual components to them and all look different from each other. You can't use all these weapons in one build, of course, as some require a large amount of strength points and others will use faith or intellect. So you have to really figure out which one you want to go for and stick to those types of weapons. Don't get me wrong, you will still have a lot of options to play around with. To add to the point about choosing which build to go for, you also have many different spells and incantations to choose from, which also require specific attributes depending on what you build on. From long range, close range, fire affinity, frost affinity. For example, intellect is a good mage build for long range powerful spells, where faith is great for incantations that buff you as well as fire and lightning attacks. Once you've figured out the build you're going to use, then the real fun begins. The bosses. As I said earlier, there are a lot of bosses in Elden Ring, yet somehow they all feel very different. The mechanics of each boss are intricate yet learnable. They each have different strengths and weaknesses, and despite being sometimes agonizing to defeat, the overall joy and pride you get when you do is exhilarating. <laughs> this is the one. Yes! The occasional thrill you get when a boss appears out the ground or even from the sky. Yes, there are dragons. Even the choice of music with every encounter is incredible. Another key feature of Elden Ring has to be your mount that you acquire called Torrent. Not only does it make moving from one part of the map to the other much easier, but yes, you can fight on horseback, and it's actually very good. It did take me a bit of getting used to, but now I feel like I can take down foes with ease at high speeds. A lot of bosses are actually in the open world, which means you can use your horse to get in a few quick ride-by attacks or to summon your horse to escape if on low health. Usually with RPG games, the sheer scale of the game is what keeps you coming back as there's so much to discover, side quests to complete, and so on. It would take approximately 70 to 100 hours to complete the game on your first playthrough, and over 150 hours to complete everything. But with Elden Ring, the replayability is almost endless, as when you complete the game, you can actually start again, but keeping your same level, gear, stats, and all that. Bosses become harder, and they also drop more runes. This is where you can respec and try out a different class. Completed it as a paladin, why not try being a mage or a samurai? Not to mention the endless hours of PvP fun. My final thoughts. Elden Ring is a masterpiece. There are not many games like this that have hooked me quite so much. You feel so immersed during your whole experience with the music, the story, the exploration, the bosses, and so much more. If you're new to Souls games or not, we at Daily Gamer highly recommend Elden Ring. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell. And if you want to check out more that we're doing here at Daily Gamer, then head over to our website, daily-gamer.net.